Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report. Drones find previously unknown super colony of a daily penguins in Antarctica. FAA rules ground FPV drone flying in the national capital area. And NASA Armstrong successfully flies a new subscale aircraft. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. For the past 40 years, the total number of daily penguins, one of the most common on the Antarctic Peninsula, has been steadily declining, or so biologists have thought. A new study led by researchers from the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, however, is providing new insights on the species of penguin. In a paper released on March 2nd in the journal Scientific Reports, the scientists announced the discovery of a previously unknown supercolony of more than 1.5 million Adelie penguins in the Danger Islands. Yet in 2014, Lynch and colleague Matthew Schwaller from NASA discovered telltale guano stains in existing NASA satellite imagery of the islands, hinting at a mysteriously large number of penguins. To find out for sure, Lynch teamed up with Stephanie Genevieve, a seabird ecologist at WHOI, Mike Polito at LSU, and Tom Hart at Oxford University, to arrange an expedition to the islands with the goal of counting the birds firsthand. When the group arrived in December 2015, they found hundreds of thousands of birds nesting in rocky soil and immediately started to tally up their numbers by hand. The team used a modified commercial quadcopter drone to take images of the entire island from above. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. A drone is considered the culprit in a wildfire that burned some 335 acres near Kendrick Park in the Coconino National Forest near Flagstaff, Arizona. The U.S. Forest Service said that last week, several firefighter crews responded to a smoke report from a drone in an area north of Flagstaff. The response included several Forest Service engines, patrols, and a water tender truck dispatched from the Summit Fire Department. The fire reportedly began due to a drone that caught fire upon landing. Government industry collaboration will be needed going forward to integrate unmanned aircraft into the national airspace system, both for developing technology for such critical functions as remote identification and for establishing government regulations that will help the industry grow. That was one of the messages repeated at the second day of the third annual FAA UAS Symposium co-sponsored by the FAA and AUVSI, and held this year in Baltimore. Embry-Riddle Worldwide faculty, staff, students, and graduates recently took part in a world record-breaking unmanned aerial package delivery destined to make future drone delivery a reality. The new world's record was completed on May 5, 2017 in Austin, Texas, by a Nevada unmanned aerial system consortium called Team Roadrunner which flew the HQ-40, a fixed-wing unmanned aerial vehicle. Using cellular connectivity, the 143-minute, 54-second flight traversed exactly 97.592 miles. On March 1st, Moore County Sheriff's deputies were dispatched to a residence in Jackson Springs, North Carolina, in reference to a missing 11-year-old female. Sheriff deputies responded to the home and began their search. Moore County Sheriff's Office drone pilot Lt. Tim Davis arrived at the residence with a Matrice 210 drone and immediately launched it to search for the child. Within 15 minutes, a heat signature was observed in the wooded area approximately 100 yards from the residence across the highway, and the child located safely. That was our Drone Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. The AMA Club in Northern Virginia has posted a Facebook message warning its members to not use FPV goggles when flying any model aircraft in the national capital area, as outlined by the FAA. According to the special rule for model aircraft, 
All models must be flown with an unaided visual line of sight. The definition of visual line of sight, published by the FAA, specifically identifies that first-person view goggles do not qualify. Visual line of sight while flying your drone, you must be able to see it at all times, using your own natural vision. Until further notice, all FPV, multi-rotor, and wing races, practice sessions, and recreational flight activities at Poplar Ford and Lorton are suspended, stated the Post. The FAA has begun doing field checks in the region in the last two weeks, and we expect enforcement actions against anyone or any club found to be violating the rules. Any willful individual violations at MVRC fields will result in suspension of club flying privileges wrote Jonathan Pruitt, NVRC president. Pruitt said the board is preparing a waiver request to the FAA in concert with AMA to return previous FPV policies. The Subscale Research Lab at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in California recently introduced a new addition to their fleet of miniature aircraft. The not-so-small Microcub is a Bill Hempel 60% scale Super Cub modified by Armstrong to support engineering campaigns focused on the integration of UAS into the National Airspace System. On January 18, 2018, Armstrong Subscale Research Lab team piloted the Microcub for its inaugural flight, successfully demonstrating the aircraft's airworthiness. This initial flight was intended to check the ground handling and flight characteristics of the aircraft along with validating the command and control system, verifying the remote control only mechanism, setting the tuning for autopilot gain, performing engine runs, gauging fuel consumption, and testing stall speed. Though small in size, the Micro Cub is a powerful vehicle in the realm of small to mid-sized UAS aircraft. Specifications of the vehicle include a 21-foot wingspan, a Piccolo autopilot guidance system, and a JetCat SPT-15 turboprop, a design only model aircraft fanatics can dream up. The successful maiden flight means that Microcub will undergo additional aircraft modifications to validate risk reduction technology. Eventually, the technology will be integrated onto other NASA UAS aircraft, such as NASA Ames Sensor Integrated Environmental Remote Research Aircraft, Sierra B. Well, that's our program for this week. Airborne's AMA Drone Report is presented weekly in cooperation with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And in addition to this program, our daily Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.